so here I'll just kind of do a recap. Um, it's exciting because I was looking at your article. One of these letters we found uh, from you, which is which looks great. It's from October 1992, and it's titled "An Open Letter to the New Age Community." And it's essentially a letter to the New Age community telling the light wor workers to wake up and go within because they're still too focused on the material world, right? Oh, um, that sounds pretty relevant to today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so I'll just kind of read a couple of, of excerpts here uh, from the paragraphs just to kind of jar the memory a bit. Um, so here, an open letter to the New Age community uh, one of the, the parts that stood out was, we talk a lot about going within and relying on God for our sustenance, yet the seeking of outer security has been our real God. The old world order is all too eager to remind us of all the things we need from the outside. And yeah, and so it's it's essentially kind of like, wake up guys, and let's let's look at what we're doing, how we're still participating in the material world here. And how can we make this this shift and, and this change without being manipulated by by the old world? Right, right, yeah. And I, I have to say that the, this this article is still relevant. Yeah. <laughs> so, so why don't I give a little bit of my perspective on what's changed since 1992? Does that sound good? That would be so beautiful. Thank you very much. So, yes, a lot has changed, uh, and yet uh, the very basic premise of that article has not changed. Uh, people are still far too materialistic. Um, there's still a tremendous number of people who can talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. People, people are not, uh, a lot of people are not doing the deep work to clear their layers of the subconscious, their emotional traumas, psychological issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of wounded healers in the world, you know, that are, uh, they understand intellectually, they've maybe had some powerful meditations from time to time, and they are sincere about wanting to help the planet, but they haven't done their inner work, so many people. Absolutely. And, and it makes a huge difference. And the other piece that's really relevant now with the elections coming up is how mm -hmm. polarized people are. They either love one of the candidates or hate one of the candidates, and there doesn't seem to be enough neutrality. By neutrality, I don't mean you don't care about what's going on in the world. Yes, we need to care about what's happening in the world. We need to have love and compassion for those who are suffering, and we need to feel their pain at a certain level. But the, the Buddha used the phrase compassionate detachment, mm -hmm. and that means you care about people, you feel their pain, but it's not your suffering. It's mm -hmm. not anybody's suffering. It's it's who we are is beyond the suffering. And so to be able to come from a state of consciousness that is beyond the suffering and then pour love and compassion into the suffering, into the people who are going through hard times or in, in a war zone or, uh, you know, a, a illness, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And... And I think that's the part people are missing. They, they either go to one extreme, which says, well, it's their karma they created, and I'm just going to be in blissed-out mode and mm -hmm. sort of sit in my cave on the mountaintop and not worry about anything that's going on in the world. Or they get totally caught up in what's going on in the world, and they get polarized, and they hate this candidate or they hate that candidate. And that's the other side of this polarization, either getting too caught up in what's going on in the world or, or being too detached. <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. Do you, do you think that from October 1992, when you'd written this up until now in your experience working with people and, you know, that anything has improved since then? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's been much improvement. The, the sheer numbers of people that are waking up are, you know, it, it's and it's a, a basic level of awakening, I must admit, you know, just the very people are just waking up to simple, basic truths that we have to rely on God within instead of relying on outer authorities to keep us safe. Absolutely. I think a few people, that's a hard awakening for some people. You know, for some of us, it's a real basic level, but for some, it's like, whoa, you mean, not, you know, government's not here to keep me happy and safe? 
Um, you mean the vaccine's not safe and effective? You know, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that's a level of awakening, but it's a very basic level of awakening. Um, the, 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 the biggest soul lesson that hasn't been learned since 1992 is that we must rely on God within as our authority, not the, the medical industry or the rabbis or the clerics or the priests, but God within. Yes. Yes. Very well said. Very well put. Uh, absolutely. Um, oh, I was drawn to a paragraph that you had written. I'm just going to read it here. Uh, you'd written, so how do we withdraw from our dependence on outer society? How do we remove the mark of the beast, so to speak, from our foreheads? First of all, we must create our own system, beginning with self-sufficient spiritual communities. Do you still believe in that? Uh, yeah, I not only believe it, but to some degree I'm living it. I'm, I'm living in Mexico as part of a spiritual community here that's kind of loosely based on A Course in Miracles. Uh, it's run oh. by uh, James Twyman, who a lot of people know. He's pretty well known. And uh, so it's a beautiful place. Uh, it's in a beautiful part of Mexico. And uh, I go back and forth between the U.S. and Mexico frequently. Oh, beautiful. Uh, but, mm-hmm. But it's, it's the future of humanity. Alternative communities are the future. And, and obviously the dysfunctional cities are not going to be the solution uh, where you hardly even know your neighbors. And, you know, if there's a major supply chain disruption, people start, you know, uh, fighting each other for scraps of food. You know, that's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And based on you saying that here, my guides are giving me a little nudge here. I've been getting inklings for a long time that the future of humanity is in these clusters of communities. So I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. So it's hard work, though, to, to do a community. And uh, yes. the hard work is dealing with the egos of the participants, you know. And again, this comes back to people not doing their inner work. Uh, there's a lot of loving, wonderful people, and when you're in close quarters with them, whatever issues are unresolved are going to come up to be resolved. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I love that you're doing this. I'm in the middle of A Course in Miracles myself for the first time, so that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good model. I, I don't agree with everything the Course says, uh, but it, it has some really, really good points, especially about letting go of guilt and about forgiving, and when you forgive, you release karma. Mm-hmm. You get rid of all your, your skeletons in your closet, you know, all your un- unresolved issues with people and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the other things that stood out was your writing about Mother Earth here. I'll just read it. I've been told by the Divine Mother, Mother Earth, that we have until the end of this year to start coming together in community and creating true peace on Earth. Of course, a lot has happened since 1992. uh, So do you have any thoughts on that? Well, uh, I I think that the the imperative that it needs to be done now, I I would still agree with that. I'd say we have, you know, till the end of of next moment to start working on this. So it is an imperative. It's a paradox. We have all the time we need from one perspective because everything is in perfect divine timing. There is a level where that's absolutely true. You know, everything is unfolding in perfect divine order. Even when you see war, poverty, misery, and suffering, when you look out at the world, it's a little hard to understand how everything can be in perfect divine order right now, but it is. Yes. And so from that perspective, I would agree with what I said in 1992, that yes, now is the time to do something about this. Um, but it, yeah, things have happened a little more slowly than, than my guides originally predicted, and they, they've been perfectly honest as to the reasons for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they underestimated the power of souls who are creating negatively on planet Earth. Oh, interesting. Even those souls who are creating negatively are powerful, creative, spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. When you have maybe 6 billion out of 8 billion souls that are primarily creating negative consciousness, Um. they're worried about everything in their life, they're constantly focused on the negative, they're in struggle, survival mode, whatever it is, 
that's a huge number of people. Mm -hmm. um, and so it makes a difference. It makes it take longer for those of us who consider ourselves light workers to be able to be effective in the world. So mm -hmm. the progress has been slower than originally planned. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm with you. I, I totally agree. It makes complete sense to me what you're saying. It feels aligned with everything I've been told as well. <laughs> So, you know, by my soul team. So that sounds really aligned. Um, and I, I guess the last thing I wanted to ask you about was you had written a couple times here about denial. So I'll just read a couple lines here. Um, How do we take back our power by ending our denial? That's one of them. And then the 21st century will never happen unless we face our denials. Yeah, well, that's still as true as ever. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. And most of us are still in denial about uh, the things we need to work on in ourselves. I'm, I'm speaking generally, of course. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, now is the time. That it, you know, we keep thinking, well, you know, in the future I'll be enlightened, or in the future this is going to happen and that's going to happen. But the present moment is all we really, we really have. The past yes. and future are contained within the present moment would be another way to say that. Beautiful. So now is the time to do the work on ourselves so that we can become powerful peacemakers. Yeah, absolutely. That's so beautiful. Well, thank you so much for all of your time. Is there anything else that you wanted to share about your community? Anything else that you're doing, your website or? Well, I'm doing a process called, called Timeline Healing. It's a powerful therapeutic healing process. And I'm doing it in different parts of the world right now. A lot of it's in Europe and some in the United States. And, uh, of course, you can go to my website. The website's being updated at the moment, so it, it, it may not be current, but it's uh, basically salrakelly.com. Perfect. Yeah, that's so great. And if there's any other way that people uh, could get in touch with you for your work, uh, then would it be through the website as well? Yes. Great. Well, this has been great chatting with you. It's really been an honor because I know the work that you're doing, for, uh, I mean, just by looking at your website and just to go back in these archives here has, has been a trip. So <laughs> thanks very much. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. And uh, so uh, the best of luck with your, your uh, pr production.